the FM21 beta has finally dropped, so we're going to take a crack at Manchester United. So ever since Sir Alex Ferguson left Manchester United, there's been a number of managers who have came and taken on the job and failed to really live up to expectations. So we're going to see how difficult that is in FM21. I don't think it will be. I want to see the squad. I haven't seen anything yet from FM21, but based on the players that they've had uh, in previous versions of FM, I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue to get this squad up and running. But here's the breaking news Manchester United have today confirmed the appointment of Sam Williams as club manager. They pay me 125k per week. They are absolutely mental. Uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is, of course, leaving the club. So, media predictions is fourth. So, Champions League football is probably going to be expected by the board. Nicky Butler is our technical director. Mike Faden is our assistant manager. That's all fine. We'll take a look at the staff and everything once we get into the game. So this is what the coaching staff uh, say should be our best 11. Cavani up top. Highly unlikely I'm going to play him, to be quite honest with you. Rashford on the left. Van der Beek in behind with uh, James on the right-hand side. Pogba, Fernandez, Tellez, Lindelof, Maguire, Wambasaka, and David De Gea in nets. Uh, I think my squad's going to look pretty different to that. I'm not sure what sort of finances they come with Manchester United. But even if I need to sell to buy, I'm certainly willing to do so. In terms of the club vision, then playing attack and football, absolutely fine by me. Develop players using the club's youth system. Sign players under the age of 22 for the future. Sign high rep players might be a little bit of an issue. Sign English players again might be a bit of an issue. Play entertaining football and signing players under the age of 23 for the first team. That is all fine. Five-year plan, we're not bothered about that right now. Qualify for the Europa League, so they've actually been quite lenient in terms of our expectations in the first season for the Premier League. My minimum expectation is Champions League. I really want to be challenging for the Premier League title. We need to reach the semi-finals of the FA Cup, get the first knockout round of the Champions League and the League Cup. They couldn't give a toss about. So I have heard rumblings of the saving being 10 times faster this year. Let's see if that's that. It is a hell of a lot faster. There you go. So we're greeted with all of our introductory messages. First of which is Manchester United players in the last years of the deal. Cavani, Juan Mata, Jesse Lingard. Marcus Rojo, looking at all of these players, I don't think any of them are going to be particularly on my radar in terms of tying down to a longer term contract. Uh, maybe this guy, one of our youngsters, but the likes of Cavani and stuff, probably not. So before we get into anything else, I really want to see what transfer budget we start with. 52 million quid with £342,000 available in the wages. That is not too shabby at all. We are definitely going to be able to make a dent in the transfer window with this. We're currently spending £3.6 million per week in our wage budget. I would like to actually reduce that if at all possible. I'm not sure what term, we've got £287 million in the balance in terms of debts and loans. Uh, pretty significant debts, but nothing that's going to impact us really in this playthrough. Um, but I still would, I still like me sides to I'll be financially incredibly viable. So that takes us to the squad. Let's see how Manchester United are rated on FM21 by Sports Interactive. So Paul Pogba, Bruno Fernandes are listed as our two best players, which is a little bit of an issue because they're very, very similar, at least in terms of the sort of systems I usually play. Um, let's have a look at Paul Pogba anyway. Absolutely phenomenal physicals, very well-rounded, as you would expect. He will likely be playing in a central mid rail role for me. I'm not quite sure what as yet. Um, Roman playmaker maybe, deep-lying playmaker maybe. It all sort of depends on Bruno Fernandes, at least in my opinion. Attacker midfielder, a lot less physically minded, but technically uh, and mentally, actually, I think he's more well-rounded in an attacking sense. So obviously we'll be heavily reliant on them two key men to fire us forward. Anthony Martial is up next. His favourite position is a striker, which is what I was wanting. I was hoping it wouldn't be a left winger. And there's my dog. Anyway... Let's have a look at this squad properly. Let's start with the goalkeeping position. So David De Gea, 29 years old, rated as our best goalkeeper. Highly likely to be my first choice. He's not actually, just at first glance, that great in terms of his attributes. His command of his area is really poor alongside his communication. And his distribution in terms of his passing isn't all that great. Um, but his handling is fantastic. His one-on-ones is great. His reflexes are great. So he's going to be a, a very capable shot-stopping goalkeeper. It's not going to be an area I'll look at, I can already tell you now, um, especially when we've got the likes of Dean Henderson playing as the backup option. If we need 
a well-rounded keeper. We can use him if we need to, but David De Gea is likely going to be our first choice. Right back, we might have a little bit of an issue here. We've got Aaron Wambasaka and Brandon Williams in the first team squad. Wambasaka's rated as a three-star player. Um, fantastic tackle and teamwork and work rate to die for. But pretty limited in the technical aspects outside of that. 12 crossing, 11 dribbling, first touch. So he, he's a defensive-minded fullback, which is not something I'm too keen on. But at 22 years old in English with a bit of potential to grow, probably not someone I'm going to move on. Brandon Williams will be a capable enough backup option, I do think, especially as he can play on both sides. Um, he's well-rounded physically. He's slightly better in the technical aspects in terms of attacking than Wambasaka. I would maybe look interested in an option to sign there, but it's not a present issue for me. Going by the in-real-life performances, centre-back could be a present issue on Football Manager as well. Harry Maguire is rated as our best centre-back, and he probably is, but he's terribly, terribly slow. Acceleration at 10, pace at 12, not ideal. Uh, I, I like to play quite a high line generally on Football Manager, so that can present a little bit of an issue. But outside of that, he's fantastic, so... Uh, he will definitely be one of our centre-halves this season. Outside of him, we've got Victor Lindelof and Eric Bailly, who will likely be the other two potential options. I don't like Victor Lindelof already, just quickly looking at him. His mentals aren't great. Physically, he's well-rounded. Um, he's got the technicals in the right areas in terms of his tackling and his marking. But his heading's poor. Uh, I don't think he will be the man. Eric Bailly, again, a little bit different of Lindelof. He's much better well-rounded in his physicals. He's got a little bit of the mentals in the right area, but his concentration is absolutely dire. Uh, his technicals, his tackling, marking, and heading are fine. We need a centre half. There we are. That's our uh, first job in the transfer window. In terms of left sided uh, defenders, they of course signed Alex Tellez in the summer, and he's absolutely phenomenal. Play this boy, and he will absolutely ser ser serve you well during your save. 27 years old, three and a half star current, absolutely no need to improve on that. Luke Shaw starts the game injured, but should be fit for the start of the season. Uh, a, a decent enough backup, that's all we can say about him. Central midfielders, of course, we've spoke about Bruno Fernandes and Paul Pogba already. We've got Donny van den Beek, who of course was signed at the back end of last season. I think he's probably going to end up being a starter for me, to be quite honest with you, alongside Paul Pogba. Um, two pretty attack-minded midfielders should be said but hopefully with the right rules and in the right system we'll be able to make that work and the man you manage his physicals are absolutely diabolical if you've watched any of my previous years before physicals i think are very very important in football manager especially at the higher end of the game and that's not good enough we've also got scott mctominay who can come on much more defensively minded so i think it's probably going to be a toss-up between him and van der big to see who actually gets into the first 11 and then of course we've got fred who Quite frankly, he's on the transfer list. So Tatton midfielders on the left-hand side, we've got Martial and Rashford, who we've already... Have we spoke about? Yeah, I think Rashford's going to be the starting player on that left-hand side. Not too much strength and depth here. We've got Daniel James and Jesse Lingard, who can both play on that side. But uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. And on the right-hand side, we've got Mason Greenwood, who's a three-star current, four-and-a-half-star potential player. I came into this save expecting to, to need to sign a right-winger. Um, Mason Greenwood might very well be my right winger for this season purely down to the amount of potential he's got I think I might persist with him and then strike well, of course we've already got uh, spoken about Anthony Martial Edinson Cavani is actually really well rounded and he's he's messed with me mind a little bit I came into this fully expecting Anthony Martial to be our start and striker absolutely no ifs buts or maybes but when you compare them like this, obviously Martial's got the speed. Um, but in terms of the polygon, maybe maybe Cavani is the one. Defenders irrelevant. Mental's far better. Aerially's far better as well. And as a lone striker, I do like them to be well-rounded enough to be able to get on the end of crosses should it be uh, actually happening. Technically, he's not as good. Attacking-wise, he's slightly better. Speed is the major, major difference. But look at that. Cavani's just a better player, isn't he? I think Cavani might be the starter. It, it all depends. I might like the pace too much. So looking at choosing a tactical style, g press, tiki-taka and fluid counter-attack are the recommended by me assistant manager. g press was the winning one last year. I'm going to go with that. I don't want to play too defensive. I want to play a 4-2-3-1 attacking. So I think this is going to be something like the system that we play. 
Uh, we need a defensive-minded central midfielder. It could be Paul Pogba, could be Scott McTominay, it could be Donny van den Beek, even if it doesn't naturally suit their attributes. We're going to have wing backs. Uh, I don't think they're going to be attacking. At least Juan is certainly not going to be attacking. Alex Tellers maybe with Marcus Rashford cutting in on the left-hand side as an inside forward. We've got Mason Greenwood on that right-hand side and cut in as well. Bruno Fernandes playing in behind Edison Cavani. Major, major issue is defence. We need to sign a centre-half. I'm happy with Harry Maguire, but we need somebody who has pace, basically. We're going to be playing a pretty high line. Um, we need someone who's going to be able to recover if any long balls should beat our defence. Let's head to the season preview and see whether the media expect us to finish. So, will they expect us to finish in fourth? Chelsea, Liverpool and Manchester City rounding out the top four. I want to be challenging at the top of the league, to be quite honest with you. With £52 million, the squad that we've got, the funds that we'll be able to raise through some of the dead wood in the squad, we're going to be able to improve our first eleven massively, I'm hoping. And with the right kind of system, the right kind of formation, we should be able to get the business done. So players who could potentially leave, and we've obviously got a centre-back we need to sign, which means someone's got to go. We'll keep Victor Lindelof, maybe Harry Maguire, Max Rojo can go, I think. Eric Bailly, eh, maybe. Phil Jones, injured for four months, so he's not going anywhere. So there's definitely some breathing room in terms of being able to let someone go at centre-back. We've got three good goalkeepers. Not necessary. Sergio Romero or Dean Henderson are likely to leave, but Dean Henderson's probably going to stay, as he could potentially compete with uh, David De Gea in that goalkeeper spot. Central midfield, probably not an area I'll look to improve, but definitely an area where we could let someone go. Maybe Fred didn't look uh, over appealing in terms of his attributes so yeah we've definitely got some ways to go to get this squad up to snuff but i'm really really happy with the early signs staffing wise what we're looking at staffing we've got the best recruitment in the premier league by far we have 29 of 16 scouts um so i'm not sacking any scouts because it will be an absolute waste we have got uh, one goal uh, one coach that we could bring in and we've got some areas where we're not the best in. Defence and second, attack and second. I mean, we're pretty good across the board in terms of our coaching setup. So there's not too much you would need to do to get Manchester United up to the top in terms of coaching. Just having a quick look at some of the defenders that we could potentially sign. Jules Kunde is definitely someone who I need to get scouted to get the full picture of exactly what he looks like. He, I think he might end up being a tasty player alongside maybe Demiral from uh, Juventus. Could be... An interesting option. We're going to have to wait and see. But anyway, boys, I'm going to go away, get some scouting done, get some transfers done, and then we're going to play our first game in the very next episode. Of course, our first game in the Premier League is going to be against Brighton at home. We've got some interesting friendlies, FC Bayern, Olympiakos, Galatasaray. We'll see how the boys perform in the new system. Maybe I end up making more changes than I expect, but 52 million quid, 300k in the wage budget. We're going to be able to do some damage with that. But anyway, lads, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.